Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to Livestream Tuesday. I hope you guys have had a good weekend and that your Monday wasn't too bad. I think for a lot of us it was exactly the same thing. We were just staying at home, but we did have a lot of early birds in today and it was about 25 past 11, so about 45, 35, 45 minutes ago. It might have been quarter past. I'm not sure, but my maths is maybe letting me down. Thank you guys for joining me so early on. Let me get you guys up on screen because we have the live chat room. Let's have a look who's in there. We've got Linda and Lucy and Shirley and Vince and Reb and Tara and Jennifer and Rene and Jeff and Glam Gal. That's Karen, hello, and Barbara in there as well. Thank you guys for joining me on this live stream on Tuesday night. And I almost played the wrong intro, which would have been Saturday. And the other thing is, that I set up the whole show and then, of course, true to form, I'd totally forgotten to make sure that the camera was working because looking at myself is the last thing I'm thinking of doing when I'm setting up the live stream. But fortunately, we are live and it's all okay. So fingers crossed it will continue for the whole live stream with our internet connection as well. But I also want to get the names of my patrons up on screen because these people make everything possible on the channel, including the analysis videos as well and all of the music videos. So thank you guys so much. You know who you are and they also pop up in the super chat window as well which I am gonna get on screen because we've had a little bit of action in there so Sandy has donated five dollars thank you so much for that Sandy the message is thank you so much for providing so much joy during this isolation so appreciate it so thank you for that Sandy and we have Deb in the house as well and Poets Dreams has donated $4.99 and there's no message with that so thank you for that and Carla has donated $4.99 thank you Carla so much for that and again that's a straight up donation as well and I do have a secret agent out in the world who has informed me that in England technically it would be Carla's birthday today. So everybody say hello and happy birthday to Carla because it is her birthday here in England, but not where she is at the, well, at the moment, but it's because of the different time zones. So happy birthday, Carla. I hope you have a great day tomorrow. But everybody I'm sure in the live chat room wishes you well and hopes that you have a great day tomorrow as well. So thank you everybody for tuning in and we are going to be getting through the videos. Thank you again everybody over on Patreon for us, well, answering my ask for requests or my request for requests as I always say in these live streams because it does help me out with playing the videos and it means that I don't have to make too many decisions and we did have two requests for the cover tonight so it makes it a little bit easier when we don't have a tie like we did last time so we'll be getting stuck into that soon so the first video on the agenda tonight <laughs> let's not slip into an analysis video but it's going to be my song called don't cry and it's going to be the lyric video version of it and this was requested over on patreon by Teresa. so thank you so much for that i'm going to be in the chat room while this is playing as i always am with all of the videos so i hope you guys enjoy this and i'll see you guys after rock
And there we have it, that was my song called Don't Cry. And as you saw, you can pick that song up with the album Persistence if you want to over at Wings of Pegasus dot com forward slash store if you want to get straight to the store section so while that video was playing there was a question that i saw where somebody was asking if i was playing all of the instruments and on the album i'm doing everything apart from the drums so the drummer that was in my band we used to play in and around london quite a lot but then, as you guys probably already know, because I've mentioned it in lots of live streams, that for original music it is pay to play. So it means that we couldn't afford to keep going. But we had all the songs arranged, obviously. I've got all of the songs and the guitar parts and the vocals, the harmony vocals. But then the drums is something that I really liked and like the way that James Knowles, who's the drummer, drums. So I got him in just to get down the album in the studio and it was pretty straightforward because we've been gigging with the songs. So it's just a case of recording all of the drums with MIDI and I don't know whether you know what that is. Maybe you've got to have a little bit of experience with music, but recording in MIDI means that it's triggering sounds and it's just a lot easier to edit things that way. And as you can see, there is an electric drum kit behind me, drum kit behind me, <laughs> and that's what we use to go into the computer through MIDI. So yeah, we just went through the whole album and everything else is me. So all the guitars and all the vocals and the little bits of keys that you can hear as well and the bass, of course. So yes, it's just the drums that aren't me on the album. But thank you so much for posing that question. I do try to keep a lookout in the chat room while the videos are being played. But we have had a little bit of action in the Super Chat window again. Thank you so much for this. And before I remember, I'm really bad at telling people to have a look at that thumbs up button. And if you could click on that like button, it would really help me because it helps this whole live stream to get out there and for the channel to grow and also to get a few more subscribers as well. So thank you everybody for hitting that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up. So if we can spike the likes, that would be great. We're 12 minutes into the live stream and plug of the mug as well. You can pick this up underneath the video, underneath the video in the tray. I'm not sure what you call it, but there's a tray underneath this video that has the shirts in, t-shirts, this t-shirt that I'm wearing, and the mugs as well. So you can pick up the mugs from down there. And you can spike the likes as much as you want, as long as it's only one like, because you can't do it any more than that. Anyway, let's not get technical with things. We are gonna be looking into the Super Chat window because we've had another donation, and this is from Kevin. So thank you so much for that. Kevin is for $5. And the message is, happy birthday to your neighbour at Windsor's, or Windsor's Castle. It's Windsor Castle, but I think that's just a quick typing thing. Her Royal Highness, the Queen. I was going to send her a pizza, but it's late there. And I'm not sure whether pizzas can get through the security. Maybe they can. Maybe the Queen is a secret pizza lover and does order it quite a lot you never know but thank you Kevin so much for that donation I'm gonna have to look over to the side here because I can't see the next one on the screen in front of me even though I can see there is something at the bottom there and it's Gina who has donated $9.99 thank you for that Gina the message is I recently re-watched the Randy Rhodes analysis do you have any classical influences also happy birthday Carla so thank you for that Gina and with classical influences, I haven't ever really listened to classical music with a mind to play lead guitar like that or play guitar like that. It's only from my parents who might have been listening to it when I was young that I had any real exposure to classical music, but then I didn't really apply it to my 80s hard rock influences that I then got into. And I very much approach and approached playing the guitar or learning to play the guitar to play the notes that I was hearing in my head that I wanted to sing. Obviously, I couldn't sing when I was younger, so the guitar was a way for me to put across the notes that I was imagining in my head through the guitar, and that's what I was really focusing on. So it wasn't probably 
classical in the sense that sometimes you do get very fast passages that are being played and I couldn't think that quickly. I didn't have that many notes going on in my head, so it's something that I didn't really apply to my learning of the guitar. I just wanted to sing through the guitar. That was my main aim. So yeah, with classical music, it wasn't really one of those things. I think certainly when you are influenced by classical music on the guitar, you can get into all of the muscle memory, the technical side of things to get all of your runs down because some of the violin runs, for example, that are very fast, you need a lot of technical ability in order to play those. And of course, you have to be able to think that fast in the first place, which is something that I physically can't do or mentally can't do. And I don't think many people can because it's, in fact, I know that everybody can't think that quickly, especially when you're talking about 15 to 20 notes a second. It's just something that is muscle memory. So I always tend to play. And certainly when I was learning, I tended to play a lot more slowly. And then as you start to get more experienced with playing, then you start to add muscle memory in there as well, just to make it a little bit more interesting when you're playing lead. But thank you so much, Gina, for that donation. And Lisa is in the house as well. So hello, Lisa. And she has donated $5. And the message is, it's movie night. Pick one, School of Rock, Rockstar, or Almost Famous. And it would probably have to be... School of Rock, even though those are three really good choices and difficult to choose between them, but maybe something a little bit more lighthearted for the current times. So I'll go for School of Rock because that is just a good fun movie and one of those that I'm sure that Jack Black is actually, I know that he is uh, such a musician actually deep down he's one of these guys that has been heavily into music and he's got a deep appreciation of it and I think in order to make a movie like that you have to have that background because it would be difficult to act so well if you didn't already have that background of being so into music and certainly Jack is one of those guys who's into a lot of bands that I have certainly been into, so I can relate to him in that way, but also the fact that he is a musician, and you get the sense that he's a musician, and he loves his music, but he also acts. So I think it's one of those things that does come across in that film in particular, and also being a guitar teacher myself, I can relate to that as well. But anyway, that is the one that I would go for. So Lisa, thank you so much for that. And Kathleen has donated $10 as well. Thank you for that, Kathleen. It's a straight up donation and no message with that. So thank you for that. And Marilyn is in the house as well. Hello, Marilyn. And she has donated $5. Thank you for that. The message is, hi, Phil. Thank you for being you. If you were to go on tour in today's world, is there enough money in it with a heart? And I don't know. Probably there is. I mean, there always is going to be if you manage things correctly, because if, I mean, when I used to play, it was six pounds a ticket if people wanted to come and see us. And obviously the promoters for the original music took all of that money. But if you think that a really good venue in London, and I'm talking about borderline arena, is going to be about a grand, maybe a little bit more to hire out for a particular night. Obviously, the arenas are in massive demand and get booked up years in advance, but they have sister venues as well, which you can book up for about a grand. And it means that if you can sell enough tickets, then it is financially viable. If you can fill in every seat or every standing position, I'm not sure that I play a gig where everyone's seated because it's a bit weird, but if you can get people standing and enough people in to buy enough tickets to make a profit, then it's always going to work. I think people make the mistake with their figures sometimes and also... Unfortunately, nowadays with the music industry, ticket prices are crazy. You're not going to be able to go out and see a band or a famous band for six pounds. It's going to be more like 40 pounds. And when I'm talking about pounds, I'm talking maybe $70 and above for a ticket to go and see a band nowadays. So yeah, it is an expensive business from the other side. Whereas 
I'm sure the record labels are raking it in. In fact, I know they are for live performances, but it's something that playing live is always going to be profitable, but I'm not really in it. I don't think I'm ever going to play live and make the tickets ridiculously expensive because as long as I can break even and make enough money to cover costs and obviously buy food and transport and cover those costs as well, then that's all I really aim to do with anything. But that is just how I roll because I know being a fan of music as well that sometimes ticket prices are crazy and there's no real justification for that as an artist it's just a record label that is trying to make as much money as possible but thank you so much for that I am going to have to scroll down in order to see what's going on but thank you so much Marilyn for that donation and Rhiannon is in the house as well and has donated ten dollars and everybody Rhiannon you can see her name there at exactly the right time what are the chances of that that is destiny because Rhiannon was my first ever patron so thank you so much for that support everybody say hello to Rhiannon in the live chat room because it was something that when I set up Patreon, I wasn't sure anybody would support me, but I thought I'd throw it out there and hopefully somebody might think that I was worth giving a little bit of time to and a little bit of support to. And Rhiannon made that jump and supported me. So a massive thank you to you for not only joining me tonight, but getting everything started for me over on Patreon. Because I think as an artist, you never really know if people want to support you or if they will support you. So you do pretty much just throw it out there and say, does anybody maybe want to get involved with what I'm doing? And it just so happened that she did. So it gave me then the confidence to move forward with everything. And I think confidence is a massive thing, especially in art, whenever you're looking at releasing something that you know you've put a lot into and then it's just whether people are going to appreciate it or like it or not, it is always a little bit risky putting yourself out there, but Rhiannon definitely did do that for me and gave me that confidence. So thank you so much for that. So anyway, there is a little bit more action in there in the super chat window, but thank you Rhiannon for tuning in tonight and for that support so early on. Marge has donated $2 as well. Thank you for Marge and that's a straight up donation. And Janice is in the house and has donated $50. So thank you for that Janice. And the message is missed watching your live stream. Hope all is well with you and everyone. So we're having just a night of saying hello, but Janice, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And everybody say hello to Janice as well. And we will always be looking out for Mario in the live chat room. And I haven't seen him yet, but we will wait and see if Mario turns up. So there is another donation under Neath that, I think, and yes, it is. It's from Lucy. I can't see it on this screen, but it's popped up on this one. And Lucy has donated $14.99. Thank you for that, Lucy. The message is cross the pond fund donation, Phil Fest, Winger Fest, or for Phil Con. We've got some rock horns, a heart, and peace. And the message continues, you'd do well in the States. So thank you for that, Lucy. And that will go in the Cross the Pond Fund. And also we have had another donation under that from Ken. But thank you for that, Lucy. Ken has donated $5. Thank you for this, Ken. The message is, Phil, can you play any brass instrument? And also, do you have any songs on your albums with brass and two rock horns? So no, I haven't got that far yet. It's something that I think with brass, it's a little bit more specialized in terms of getting your hands on that kind of instrument. And because my dad plays drums and keys and guitar, it's something that from a young age, I've had access to and I started on guitar it wasn't until a lot later that I then played a little bit on drums and then on keys as well but certainly with the guitar it's been in our house and it was something that I could pick up as a kid and mess around with and then play on acoustic guitar and then finally when 
I think I was, yeah, maybe 12 or 13, I got my own electric guitar. So with brass, yeah, like I said, it is something that I haven't got that far yet with. And I think it would be a totally different way of learning because it's not like playing a guitar in any shape or form. So <laughs> for the moment, I haven't made any inroads into that. And I don't really think I would write with a brass section in mind when, or a brass instrument in mind when I'm writing a song because it tends to be just guitar based and maybe harmony vocals and maybe some keys in there, just the, all the classic 80s instruments that come in. But thank you so much for that donation. It looks like I'm gonna have to scroll down a little bit again. So thank you everybody for these donations and thank you for that. Ken Shay has donated 10 euros. Thank you for that, Shay. The message is love your channel, Phil. Would love a review of Irish band Aslan, Crazy World or This Is. So thank you for that, Shay, and I'll make a note of that and put it on the list. Thank you for that donation and for the message. And Linda has donated $5. Thank you, Linda. Again, the message is, how do your lessons differ when a student wants to learn to play lead guitar? And they don't really differ. <laughs> when somebody wants to play lead guitar, I just teach them the shapes of how to play lead and the techniques in exactly the same way that if somebody wants to learn just to play chords, then we go through those. And with lead guitar, I tend to go into chords to begin with. I mean, if somebody turns up and they say, right, I want to play lead guitar and I can't do anything on the guitar yet, then we will always start with chords. Because if you start with the chords, it means that you can now play your lead guitar in relation to something. There's no point in playing a lead guitar if you don't know how to play over a progression or you don't know where to go for a particular key. And more often than not, once you've got the basis of a chord and the knowledge of that chord, you can now relate all the notes that you're playing to the chord. So it's something that helps you to understand it from a mental point of view because You've got your chord shapes that are, when you learn your bar chords, all of your pentatonic shapes, for example, are really close to your bar chord. And in the minor key, they are exactly where your bar chord is when you're playing that. So it's something that when you do learn chords to begin with, playing leads a lot easier. It's just getting down the lead technique, but you'll know where all the notes are. It's then being able to get those notes to sing. But anyway, thank you so much for that. I'm gonna have to scroll up again. And it was Pian Piano Dean. <laughs> I just thought that was a lot more complicated than it was because it was all one word. But thank you, Linda, for that donation. But Piano Dean has donated $2. Thank you for that. And the message is, hey, Phil, do you think John Sykes is underrated? And I don't know. I think if you know John, not personally, but if you know of his playing, then he's not underrated because a lot of guys who do play will know exactly how good John Sykes is. I do have John on the video here somewhere, so you guys can go and check that out independently if you don't know who John is and you want to check out his playing. But certainly, once you've heard him, you won't underrate him. Maybe is John Sykes underknown? Then potentially, yes. I would definitely say that, that he's not a name that people would instantly recognize. But I think it's just because of the nature of the style of music and maybe not being in the mainstream. I think a lot of people know particular guitarists because they've had a hit or a series of hits in the mainstream. And if you haven't really had a long time in the mainstream charts and you're not a guitarist that has had that exposure, then unfortunately, no matter how good you are, you might not be as well known as other players who might not be as technically proficient, but they've had very popular songs. So I think it might be one of those cases for John, but the answer to that is, if you know his playing is definitely not underrated, but if you are talking about underknown or not known as much as he could be, then definitely yes. But thank, thank you, Piano Dean, for that question. And Laura's in the house as well. Hello, Laura. Thank you for this $20 donation. And the message is, thanks for all you do to keep us sane. So thank you, everybody. Laura, 
in that chat room. You guys, thank you for joining me on these live streams because it's great just to touch base with you guys, see how you're doing, and also just see who's in the house. And also, you can head over to the Wings of Pegasus supporters group because Laura is over there with Vince, who hosts the after party, and you guys can join that group, and Laura will allow you into that group. Just quickly, today I have been trying to get the header images. This is just something that you have to do on the internet. And as I do everything myself, I was trying to get the header images for YouTube. Maybe Facebook I did as well and Patreon. And I didn't do Twitter, so I didn't get that far. But I was trying to get a uniform color and the logo to be the purple one that is now on the YouTube videos, the analysis videos. Anyway, to cut a long story short, all of the header images are different pixels and getting them all right and then having to redesign it is a nightmare. So if you saw on Facebook that I kept on updating the header image because sometimes Facebook does a post and says Wings of Pegasus have updated or changed their profile image and you'll see one and then it'll say Wings of Pegasus have updated their profile image and I did it three times because I don't know if the pixels are going to be right and that you're going to be able to see the logo until I upload it and see it and then, oh no, it's wrong. So then I have to edit it and then upload it again and oh no, now it's too big. So then I have to edit it and you get the picture. So if you were getting alerts about that, I do apologize, but that was me earlier just trying to get the header images for all of the pages. I also did the Wings of Pegasus dot com site as well. So that's changed to the new logo look. But anyway, that is just a bit of information for you. Thank you, Laura, so much for that donation. And Deborah's in the house as well and has donated two dollars. And Deborah says, hi, Phil, love your new album. Congratulations. So this is the album that has been out for quite a while. But thank you, Deborah, for that. The annoying thing is that Ages ago now, it's probably over a year, I was trying to get a cover album released and I've still got no further with the copyrights from hearing back from the owners of the copyrights so that I can actually release an album. So it just goes to show how long it takes people to get back to you in the industry because I think that was not the Christmas gone, but the Christmas before that I went through the process and started trying to get the copyrights in order for me to be able to put out an album. And I think actually there is quite a lot on YouTube and on the internet of people releasing covers albums who don't have the rights to do that. And it is really dangerous ground. So I, wa I really want to make sure that if I am releasing anything, I have the rights and the agreements in place in order to do that. So it does take a very long time, unfortunately, but the original album has been out for a while and you can pick that up at wingsofpegasus.com. Of course, I own all the rights to my own music, so that's absolutely fine. So thank you for that, Deborah. And Doug has donated $4. Thank you for that, Doug. We are going to be getting into the second video of the live stream soon. But just to get through these amazing donations, thank you for this, Doug. The message is, any experience with silent guitars? Question mark, harp guitar, question mark. So it is something that I haven't got into yet. I'm very much just even talking about seven string guitars or eight string guitars or just crazy string guitars which you can get nowadays. I haven't got that far even with guitars. I'm still just on six string guitars, but silent guitars, harp guitar, no, not yet. And it's something that I'm finding at the moment, just having the time to practice is the thing that I don't have the time to do. Unfortunately, like I said, I'm doing everything on a daily basis. So today, rather than sitting down practicing or writing any new songs or doing anything like that, I've been trying to move my logo slightly left and right and making it bigger, making it smaller in order for it to fit and be the right pixel size for the various websites. So it's all of this stuff behind the scenes that does take a long time and does take a lot of time away from maybe learning other instruments. So unfortunately I haven't, but thank you for the question, Doug. And Teacher Man 1955 is in the house and has donated $10. The message is, hi Phil, I learn something every time I watch one of your analysis. I like the idea 
of you doing an analysis with a member of the band you are analyzing. So thank you for that. And it is something that I have done recently with the warning, which was an interesting video to do as well. Hopefully, fingers crossed, maybe next month I can do something with Buck, and that's Buck Dharma from Blue Oyster Cult, and something that we've been trying to do for ages, but we will hopefully get that done next month, maybe. But I find it really interesting talking to other musicians, and especially about their performances and their technique and what they go through, and the warning was certainly interesting because we had the whole MIDI setup, which I think a lot of people don't really appreciate all of that stuff that goes on behind the scenes. But thank you so much for that donation. And Karen has donated again, $5. Thank you for that, Karen. The message is, hi, Phil, enjoy your orange squash. I have my blue Gatorade. Thanks for what you do and for being you with a picture of a guitar. Cheers, Karen. So thank you for that. And I hope you enjoy the Gatorade. I think that's an energy drink because I've had that before. And I think I've had the blue one before, which is something like raspberry or maybe that flavor, but I like it. Whatever the flavor it is, the blue one is good. And sometimes I'm not even exercising and I just use it as a drink rather than sometimes, ex well, using an excuse you can exercise and then have these nice flavored drinks and say, well, I'm exercising, so I've got to have a whole bottle of Gatorade at once. But anyway, even if you're just doing a light walk, thank you so much for that, Karen. And Harlot's in the house as well and has donated $4.99. Thank you so much for that, Harlot. The message is, I saw Metallica forward slash Master of Puppets tour in 18... 18. That would be impressive. In 1989, they opened for Ozzy. Wow, what a gig that is. The ticket was $19. That's what I'm talking about. Back in the day, these bands, you just saw a monster lineup of bands and it was $19. Where have the days gone? And it wasn't as if everybody back in the 80s were living on bread and water. They were doing quite well, especially the record labels. So, it just goes to show how much money they must be making now, considering that back in the day, you could cover all of the costs for $19. But anyway, thank you, Harlot, so much for that donation. And Ken has donated $5. Thank you, Ken. The message is, Phil, do you have any plans in the future to tour the US in the future? You rock with some rock horns. So thank you for that, Ken. And currently, as everything is, there are no plans, but... I hope to in the future at some point. It would be great if I could get over to the USA in any kind of state. I mean, I'm not talking about states as in the US hitting each one, but I suppose I'd have to make that decision if I was going to go over to the USA. But in any state, whether just to come over and say hi to you guys, whether just playing a gig as well, maybe teaming up with some other musicians who are over in the USA, putting on a show or a tour, that would be cool. But thank you, Ken, so much for that donation. And Deborah has donated $10. Thank you for this, Deborah. And it's a man flying through the air like Superman, but he looks a little bit more, should I say, heavy or heavier than Superman would have been. But then again, in the movies, Superman said he was quite heavy from what I remember. So maybe it is realistic. So thank you for that, Deborah. And the $10 donation has been followed by Ian. So hello, Ian. Thank you for joining me tonight. And that is a $50 donation. Thank you so much for that, Ian. The message is for being awesome with a smiley face. So thank you, Ian. And everyone can check out Ian's cover that he did of my song called, called Don't Cry. But also Ian releases a lot of music on his channel as well. So look out for that link. If Ian wants to put that in the chat room, look out for that and give Ian a like and a subscribe if you do get a chance to head over to his channel. So we are going to be jumping in to the next video. There is another donation underneath Ian's, but I can't see it at the moment, but we will get to that after this video. And we have had the requests over on Patreon. So thank you guys so much for that. We had a winner in the, <laughs> sometimes there are ties and deciding which cover to play is a little bit difficult, but we had an outright winner here because Lisa and Teresa had both this idea of listening to I Don't Want I don't want to miss a thing by Aerosmith, and it's my version of it. It's a little bit kind of stripped back, 
but there are a little bit of drums in there and guitar so a little bit of heavier guitar comes in as well so i hope you guys enjoy this if you do get a chance please give this live stream a thumbs up it'll be massively appreciated we'll see if we can spike the likes on the 40th minute of the live stream i'll be in the chat room as always while this is playing and i'll see you guys after this rock Just to hear you breathing Watch you smile while you are sleeping While you're far away dreaming I could spend my life in this sweet surrender I could stay lost in this moment forever Every moment spent with you is a moment I treasure I don't want to close my eyes I don't want to fall asleep cause I miss you babe And I don't want to miss a thing Cause even when I dream of you The sweetest dream will never do I still miss you babe And I don't want to miss a thing And I kiss your eyes Thank God we're together I just want to stay with you In this moment forever Forever and ever I don't want to close my eyes I don't want to fall asleep Cause I miss you babe And I don't want to miss a thing Cause even when I dream of you this dream will never do I still miss you, babe And I don't wanna miss a thing I don't wanna miss one smile I don't wanna miss one kiss I just wanna be with you Right here with you Just like this I just wanna hold you close Feel your body close to mine And there we have it, that was my cover of the Aerosmith classic and thank you so much for the kind words in the chat room while that was playing. It was definitely my own version of it, I didn't have the whole orchestra going like Aerosmith do but also the vocal, just Steven Tyler's vocal is so unique as well. I think there's no point of even trying to copy that vocal that he lays down on that track but thank you guys so much for those kind words and also for hitting that thumbs up because we are at 182 likes so far i've forgotten to mention that we try and hit two 2000 that would be ridiculous 200 likes on these live streams and we've had so many likes already so thank you guys so much 
only 45 minutes into the live stream as well. We'll probably be going for 15 minutes more maybe, so we'll see if we can get up to that 200 target by then. But thank you everybody for doing that. We are going to be looking into the Super Chat window because we've had another donation and this is Thomas who has donated $5. Thank you so much for that. I can't see the message here, but I can see it over here. So the message is, have you ever broken a guitar string playing live? What do you do? Question mark. And to answer that question, no, I've never broken a string live because what I do is always change my strings before every gig. And it's something that when I do watch other guitarists, especially when I've been gigging and somebody breaks a string, I th always think to myself, why not change your strings before you go on so that you know they're fresh, that the chances of breaking one is so slim with a new set of strings. You've got to be so unlucky. And what I used to do, if you do gig yourself, is change the strings the night before your gig, play them in the night before, give them a lot of bends, and you guys know how to play in strings. Just play them in as much as you can so that they hold their tuning, and then when you play live, you're good to go because you know that those strings are only a day old. So in order for one of those to go, you've got to be so unlucky. And fortunately, fingers crossed, I haven't yet probably putting the kiss of death on it, but I haven't broken a string live yet. Of course, I've broken strings when I've been practicing, but I think if you are playing in front of anybody and it's a gig and there are people coming to watch you, then you deserve, or well, they deserve for you to just change your strings and make sure that the performance is as good as you can give it and not have to say to everyone, oh, I'm gonna have to change my strings, especially playing a Floyd Rose Bridge, which I do when I play live. So that is an extra reason for making sure that your strings are new, because if you're playing on a Floyd Rose Bridge with old strings live, then you are asking for something to go wrong. So that's just the way that I try and counteract it is to, well, solve the problem before it happens because prevention is better than cure with guitar strings. But thank you for that, Thomas. And we've had another donation. This is Orlando and this is for $20. Thank you so much for that, Orlando. And I can't remember the old username, but Orlando is just Orlando now. So it makes a thing, well, makes things a lot simpler. So thank you for that. The message is, why does it look like some guitar players curl their wrists when holding the neck of the guitar and work the strings with their fingertips while others wrap their entire hand around the neck of the guitar as they play. So it's all personal preference, but what I will say is that from a technical point of view, and it's to do with, I guess, biomechanics, is that what you call it? Playing the most efficient way possible, I think, and I know, is playing with your hand and keeping your wrist straight. And this is something that myself and Frank Marino were talking about on the video that I might have left that in the edit recently. So you can go and check that video out. But we were, we were saying about the most efficient way of playing and that you don't want to get a crook in your wrist because that is just gonna give you so many problems. And a lot of people, when they play bar chords, you can see their wrist is almost at a right angle to get around the bottom of the guitar and then apply pressure behind the guitar neck and you're pushing, especially when you first start to learn to play bar chords, against your first finger. So you've got a lot of wrist tension going on and the position that your hand is in is really weird because you're pushing against there's so much pressure going on between your first finger and your thumb and you're trying to bend your wrist around at the same time. So this is why a lot of people that do start practicing for four to six hours a day playing bar chords sometimes get problems with their wrist because of the angles that you're putting pressure through the muscles at a weird angle that the hand wasn't really designed to do. So if you can get to the point of playing the root note of your chord over the low E string, it means that you can start to play bar chords with your wrist straight. When, when you do play bar chords like that, you're never gonna run into problems. And 
I play bar chords that way on acoustic guitar as well and I teach acoustic guitar and electric guitar and I've taught a lot of guitar so it means that when I was teaching in a shop for example I think I started at 8 in the morning and then finished at maybe 5 or 6 in the evening and I guarantee you that I was playing bar chords for the whole day and I didn't have a break so it would be however many hours that is of playing bar chords and I'd be able to teach the next day as well so I know for a fact that playing the most efficient way possible allows you to play for multiple hours and not have any issues with your wrist at least I didn't experience that with the way that I play guitar chords with the bar chords and just keeping the wrist straight but anyway thank you so much for that Orlando it does really determine on the player and how they use their bar chords whether they play with the thumb over the low E string supplying the root or if they use the th um, hope you know what I'm talking about the bar chords where they flip the wrist underneath and have to push against their own hand obviously people that don't play might not know what I'm referring to but hopefully Orlando you can understand that and some people can but thank you for that donation and Liz has donated $20 thank you for that Liz the message is new song fund Love your album persistence. Got it on my phone. What will your next album be called? So thank you for that, Liz. And the next album's probably going to be called Still Persisting because <laughs> it's just something that you really have got to keep plugging away at. And it's something that I have been plugging away at, especially here on YouTube and just doing new videos every day for I think over two years now and just getting my music out there as much as possible. It is quite a hard slog but you have got to persist and eventually it will pay off and thankfully things are going well thanks to you guys and all of your support here on YouTube and over on Patreon so thank you guys for all of your support and also the super chat donations that we have are just crazy in these live streams so thank you for that so we have had just quickly another point on Orlando's question about having your wrist crooked or straight what you'll find with classical players they always have their thumb behind the guitar neck because the classical guitars have a thicker guitar neck even though you can get your thumb over the top because that's how I have played in the past but they tend to keep it more classically based and that would be classed as a classical hand position having the little hook in the wrist which can lead to a few problems but on classical guitar sometimes people can't reach their thumb over the top so they have to play it that way but anyway thank you for that Orlando and Liz and Carla has donated $4.99 as well thank you Carla and happy birthday again the message is do you say counterclockwise or anti-clockwise we say anti-clockwise and not counterclockwise even though it is the same thing but that's probably just an English thing compared to American so we say anti-clockwise here thank you for that Carla and Ray is in the house hello Ray and has donated $50 so thank you for that the message is a dog I think it is saying you're amazing so thank you for that Ray and we've had another donation from Orlando underneath that as well for $5. So thank you for that, Orlando. And the message is, I am the fan for formerly known as Natural Pro 2003. And that is why I couldn't remember it because I knew Orlando was Natural Pro 2003. But... I didn't know him as that initially until now Orlando is Orlando so thank you for clearing that up but also I think everybody knows Orlando now because he has been at the live streams for quite a while as a lot of you have so looking over into the live chat room I see KA DJs in there as well and Debbie and Batfink Reynolds is in the house and Barbara and Sue and Lucy's still in there and Calfolk7 as well and Reb 
and Jennifer as well. Thank you guys for sticking with me tonight on the live stream. And we are going to be getting into the next video of the night. And this was requested over on Patreon again. And it was Lynn who, donate, who donated earlier, but also requested this. It is We Can Fall Down. And it's the live version of it from my live stream. I hope you guys enjoy this. And I'll see you guys after. Rock. And there we have it. There's a bit of a delay coming back to me there. I don't know why that was, but that was my song called We Can Fall Down, the live version of it, obviously. And if you know the album version, then you'll probably notice that in the live version, there's no synthesizer going on, but I put that in on the album. And also, interestingly, when I was talking to The Warning about making solos and writing solos it was something that maybe 
didn't make it into the video. I can't remember whether I edited that out or not. But we were saying about how sometimes when you are writing a solo, and this is Danny that I was talking to, you write it in the studio and then you do a few takes and try a few different solos and you can then splice up a solo. So it means that you can take particular sections of one take and another section of another take and you can listen to those in different orders and sometimes it turns out that you've got a solo that you now have to learn yourself even though it's you playing it because you put things in a different order and that was the case for We Can Fall Down, the solo that I did. There's a section of it that I didn't actually play or I heard it back in the wrong order and I thought hang on that sounded good and I rewinded it and listened to it and it, again it's something that sometimes accidents happen but then accidents are good because you think oh actually I like the sound of that so you just play your solo like that and it is something that I did mention with Danny that uh, Steve Vine does a lot as well he records loads of versions of a solo and mixes it all up a bit and listens out for the best parts and then just learns his own solo that's been rearranged and it's an interesting way of doing it I don't do my solos normally like that I think that was the only song that I did that on but it just reminded me when I was imagining playing through the solo because that's <laughs> what I tend to do when I'm watching myself I'm thinking about the technicalities of playing and what I'm doing but anyway thank you for requesting that over on Patreon again you guys and that was Lynn who not only donated earlier like I said but requested that we do have a little bit of action in the super chat window and Lucy has donated $9.99 thank you for that Lucy the message is some dollars towards working on your acoustic CD still persisting that would be awesome with some rock horns so thank you for that Lucy and this is the thing that with the music that I play and doing original music I am very much someone who likes to play with a band and I do occasionally do acoustic stuff but it's not really my comfort zone I, I guess with an acoustic I'm out of my comfort zone I love to be playing fully electric and playing lead guitar solos and singing and having a drum kit going on so yeah I don't tend to do much acoustic stuff maybe I could do something in the future but an acoustic album I'd have to do a lot more songs unless I just did five or six and released it like that and just more of a demo kind of thing an acoustic demo but we will see thank you Lucy so much for that donation and Linda has donated $20 thank you for that Linda the message is okay don't laugh I now possess the family classical guitar my father bought in the 70s still in surprisingly good condition but no strings yet would you suggest starting with your guitar course on Patreon and you can do because the it's a good plug for the guitar course over on Patreon as well because that starts literally from tuning your guitar I don't go as early as putting the strings on the guitar but as soon as you've got the strings on your guitar with that first lesson it will take you through tuning your guitar and then how to play your guitar and there's four lessons on there so yes Linda if you do want to start from scratch learning how to play then the course over on Patreon is a good place and obviously once you've got access to those videos you can just re-watch them as much as you want and rewind it and if you're not sure about something you can just watch me explain it lots of times and hopefully it's going to be something that is accessible for everybody and that everybody can understand because I think a lot of guitar courses just go way too fast and you really have to slow things down in order for people to grasp the concepts of playing the guitar but thank you Linda for that donation and Batfink has donated five dollars thank you for that Batfink I'm gonna have to look over here for the message the message is Phil you mentioned a cover album earlier would you put design for life on it I think you reinvented that song it's better than the original with a smiley face so thank you for the kind words and Batfink is Phil so also a great name as well and I think with that album it's already been decided which songs are on it I can't remember off the top of my head which ones they were but I know that I have definitely put through the copyright requests for 
a very set note, well, a, a notepad of songs that I wrote down, but a very set amount of songs and very particular songs because I can't suddenly add one in because the copyright process to then get that one cleared might take another year and a half or two years or however long it's going to take. So I can't remember if Design for Life was on there, but I can have a look and double check for you, but I'll have to look on the list of songs that I'm trying to get the copyrights for, or at least the license for, in order to do that that whole. Uh, it's a bit long in the tooth, and it has taken a long time. Hopefully it'll get done at some point in the future, this album of covers, but we will see all the, of course, all the songs are already done. It's just gonna be a case of me getting the okay, and then I'll be literally be able to release it within a week and just upload it and get it on iTunes and get it on the website so you guys can download it. But just waiting at the moment, unfortunately, but that just tends to be the case with the music industry and copyrights and whenever money is involved. But thank you so much for that film. And Michael has donated $20. Thank you so much for that. Michael, the message is you're a legend to me. So <laughs> thank you for that, Michael. Thank you for those kind words and for tuning in on this live stream. And that goes for all of you guys in the live chat room tonight and the super chat window of course as well if we do get a chance i think we are over 200 likes so thank you so much to everybody for hitting that thumbs up and you can still do that we are five past one in the morning here so we can have maybe a very last spike of the likes we've got one more video to go and this one was my own idea because i might have played this at the last live stream or the one before, but the reason I'm playing it again now is I was talking to The Warning about having Na Na Na's in their song. And I didn't mention it to them, but I do have a song of my own called Hero that has Na 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 Na's in, <laughs> in the breakdown section lead up to the lead guitar solo. So in relation to that, I thought I'd play my song called Hero. It's gonna be the live version of it, but it has some Na Na Na's in there that you can look out for and you can draw that parallel with the warning. But the thing about the warning, I mean, when I wrote this song, I dread to think how young the warning were because it will make me just feel so old so i won't even go there i'm not even going to think about it but anyway this is my song called hero i hope you guys enjoy this and i'll chat to you guys afterwards rock
there we have it. That was my live version of Hero, and that is also on my album called Persistence over on wingsofpegasus.com forward slash store if you want to head over there. But thank you everybody for joining me tonight. If you were looking out for those na na nas, I'm sure you spotted them during that song. We did have a little bit of action in the super chat window, I think just before we got into that latest video performance, but it was Hardashan Kalsa who has donated $5. Thank you so much for that. And the message is higher with, is it a cat? I think so. Thank you so much for that. And we have had another donation from Ray, and this is $25, so thank you so much for that, Ray. I can't see the message, so I'm going to have to look over here. But then another one has just come in from Orlando, which has popped it up. So thank you for that donation, Orlando. But getting into Ray's message, it says, Thank you for playing Hero by Wings of Pegasus. Na, 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 na. I feel better now. So thank you for that. Ray and Orlando has, as I've mentioned, donated afterwards, and this is $10. Thank you for that again. The message is, when I think of songs with Na Na Na, I think of Get a Job by The Silhouettes, Loving, Touching, Squeezing by Journey, and All the Small Things by Blink182. That would be, but thank you so much for that. I think, oh, the message has been cut off here. So it just said blink, so I added the 182, but I am sure there are many others. So thank you for that, Orlando. And this is it, that it is so commonly used in songs and it's just to get everybody involved. It's always great to have a bit of a sing-along section of a song, especially for live performances. Thank you everybody for joining me tonight because it's just gone past 10 past one here in the UK and that's in the morning. So we're gonna be wrapping things up for this live stream. Thank you for all of those requests over on Patreon and for your support. I always say these people at the bottom of the screen make everything possible and they really do, as well as the donations in the Super Chat window and all of my patrons. Thank you for joining me over here as well and making that journey over and giving me these songs to play just making my job a little bit easier with these live streams. So we are going to be calling it to an end. I want to say a massive thank you to you guys in the live chat room. We have Holly in there and Reb and Laurie and Batfink still in there and Lucy and Beach Girl in the house and Jeff and Janice in there as well. Kevin, Harlot and Shake Your Guitar Tutorials is back as well. So thank you guys so much for, oh, Ginger Duran, I just saw it in there as well. And I don't think I've spotted Mario yet. Did I miss Mario? This is something that maybe I might have missed in the earlier live stream. Maybe I'm just blabbering on about anything and everything so I didn't see sometimes I look out for the hands like waving or something because then I get a little indication that Mario's in the house but thank you everybody else for joining me tonight and maybe Mario can catch this on catch up and if you are watching this on catch up in the future obviously check your time zones because if you're not watching it live your comment won't appear on the screen but hopefully you guys can see that <laughs> it looks like on the live chat room you get to see the messages that are being moderated because somebody just said you're gay AF which I'm not going to say what that stands for but it's interesting that we can see that on the live chat room and it looks like Laurie has just <laughs> just thrown that person out for 300 seconds so thank you for that Laurie and that was really interesting to watch that. I don't know whether that's always been the case, that people can see comments until they are blocked or moderated. But that was quite interesting because I think this is something that we will have to deal with, with especially the, I think, 128,000 subscribers that we have at the moment. A lot of other people are going to start to get involved, I think, at some point. But you guys know that on these live chat rooms, it's pretty good we're quite a good community here and as soon as somebody else comes in it's obvious that they're not part of the gang because 
it's great to get together here and know you guys on first first name terms is something that I really enjoy doing and being able to interact with you guys live just makes it so much more enjoyable, especially doing it twice a week now on Saturdays as well. It's really cool to touch base with you guys and talk to the people who are commenting on the analysis videos as well. So thank you so much for joining me and also a big shout out to the moderators for doing such a great job and Laurie and Carla and for taking care of everything that is going on behind the scenes because they make these live streams such a great place to be as well. So thank you guys and also everybody who just makes these live streams on a Tuesday night and on a Saturday night because having you guys to talk to really does make a huge difference. So thank you for spending your time with me because there are so many other things that you could be doing. So we are going to be drawing this live stream to a close now. As always, I'm going to be live again on Saturday night at the same time and the same place. If you can't make that one, I'll be back next week, next Tuesday night for live stream Tuesday. But I will be uploading the analysis videos every night as always. And I'll be in those comment sections to chat with you guys in there. So thank you everyone for joining me tonight. Thank you moderators again. Thank you guys in the super chat window and patrons going along the bottom of the screen and if you do want to get involved over on patreon you can do it's patreon.com forward slash wings of pegasus let me just quickly put that up there because sometimes people don't know how to spell the patreon part of it but that is how you spell it just in case you need a reference point to head over there and get your name on the live streams but also to get in with everybody who's also in the Wings of Pegasus supporters group over on Facebook. You can head over there because like I said, it's a great little community that we've got over on Patreon and in that supporters group as well. Quickly, just to mention that in the supporters group, I have seen your yearbook pictures that have been uploaded there. So thank you so much for that. I thought maybe I wouldn't put that on the live streams because <laughs> Some people wouldn't want their yearbook photos just broadcast to everybody. But thank you for uploading those because it was great because there were so many people there that shared my hairstyle, which was great. But obviously, I am very late to the party. So it's something that was entertaining to look at and something that unfortunately I don't have a picture to upload myself because we don't do that in the UK. Only recently in the last maybe 20 years have, and I'm showing my age here, but only in the last 20 years have they started to do proms at school and all that kind of stuff. So when I was at school, we didn't even have a digital camera, so I couldn't take a picture like that. We still had to develop film and we didn't have a camera like that as a family. So there aren't a lot of pictures of me when I was at that kind of age, unfortunately. But then in my early 20s, there are a few pictures, I think. But again, I think they were developed. So finding the physical copies of them is going to be difficult. But thank you guys so much for uploading those to Facebook. I thought I'd just mention that at the end of this live stream. So I will be back on Saturday, on Tuesday, as I said, and I'll be in the comment section of the analysis video every night and I'll be there tomorrow night as well. So thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. I'll see you guys at the next live stream and in the comment section of the next analysis video. So I will see you guys then. Have a great week. Try and stay safe. Keep yourself isolated and I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock.